Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. According to the United Nations, more than 100,000 people have fled Sudan since fierce fighting broke out between opposing groups on April the 15th. There are estimates that an additional 334,000 people have been displaced in the country. Despite a ceasefire, fighting between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces is still going on in the capital, Khartoum. Diplomatic efforts are being stepped up to bring the warring sides to the negotiating table. On the other hand, the foreign ministry has said that the army and the paramilitary unit reportedly agreed to a fresh seven-day ceasefire beginning on May the 4th, and they have also pledged to negotiate. Meanwhile, Catholic Archbishop Stephen Ameyu Martin Mula of Juba Archdiocese says the people of Sudan are suffering and yearning for peace. A statement from the Catholic Conference of Bishops of Sudan and South Sudan has also called for an end to the fighting and a return to dialogue. In the United States of America, champions of the cause of persecuted Christians in Nigeria are criticising a recent report brought out by the US Commission on International Religious Freedom. Advocates for persecuted Christians say that the report instead portrays Fulani herdsmen as persecuted victims. The report of April the 27th says the Fulani civilians are victims of xenophobic behaviour as Christians tend to portray them as hardline Islamists. The report seeks to justify Fulani attacks on Christians as reprisal attacks. The Ugandan parliament has passed a bill that proposes strict measures for those who engage in homosexual behaviour. The new bill retains most of the harshest measures of the legislation adopted in March. The provisions allow for the death penalty in cases of so-called aggravated homosexuality and a 20-year sentence for promoting such behaviour. The legislation now heads back to President Yoweri Museveni, who can either sign, veto or return it to parliament. Mr Museveni has signalled his intention to sign the legislation once certain changes are made. The White House estimates that Russia's military has suffered 100,000 casualties, including more than 20,000 deaths in the war in Ukraine in the past five months. The Kremlin asserts that Washington lacks access to reliable information. Russian Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu says that 5,937 Russian soldiers died in the conflict in September. Russian authorities claim that in its most substantial attacks on Ukraine in weeks, they have killed and injured dozens of people. Meanwhile, a building in the Dnipropetrovsk area was damaged on May the 3rd in a drone attack. This is the third wave of attacks by Russia in the past six days as Moscow intensifies its offensive. In the American state of Oklahoma, a Republican lawmaker is seeking to oust the president of the University of Oklahoma. State Representative J.J. Humphrey wants the school's president, Joseph Harris Jr., to be fired for paying $18,000 to host a transvestite event on campus. He is appealing to other lawmakers and the governor for action against the head of the university. Humphrey also says that such shows demonstrated a perverted agenda that is being pushed on campus. According to an open records request from the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs, the event's main performer, Evie Audley, was given the amount from student fees. The Catholic bishops of Cuba have presented the church's vision regarding the suffering of the Cuban people to the country's communist government. They met with President Miguel Diaz-Canel and other officials to discuss the ongoing economic crisis in the Caribbean country. The prelates have pledged to support peace and initiatives to improve the nation's socio-economic condition and social values. Meanwhile, the nation is reeling from an acute shortage of fuel because of United States sanctions. The crisis has aggravated because of the sizable drop in oil imports from Venezuela. The fuel crisis forced the government to cancel this year's May Day parade. Republican Governor Kevin Stitt of Oklahoma has inked a bill that makes it a felony for healthcare providers to treat children with puberty-blocking hormones and drugs. The new law says if a healthcare provider administers gender transition procedures to any minor, he or she can be criminally prosecuted for a felony. Violating the law can result in revocation of one's medical license to practice. Meanwhile, the new legislation earned praise from the organisation representing the state's Catholic bishops. The Catholic Conference of Oklahoma commended Governor Stitt for adding Oklahoma to the list of states protecting children from such procedures. Human rights group Safeguard Defenders has alleged that China is barring people from leaving the country by expanding exit ban laws. In its latest report, the group says that the East Asian country is imposing such laws on defenders of human rights and on foreign journalists. Titled Trapped, 
China's expanding use of exit bans. The report details the government's increasing use of these bans to punish rights defenders and their families. It also says that the curbs are meant to control ethnic religious groups, engage in hostage diplomacy, threaten foreign journalists and hold target hostages to force them to return to the country. The report also states that many individuals come to know about the ban only when they try to leave the country. Since 2018, Beijing has brought in five new laws to expand its authority on exit bans. A survey conducted in the United States reveals that one in four high school students identify themselves as homosexual or as having gender dysphoria. According to the Centers for Diseases Control and Prevention's Youth Risk Behaviour Surveillance System, 74% of students say they are heterosexual, 11.9% identify as bisexual, while 3.2% identify as homosexual, and 9% say they experience confusion about their gender. The responses of over 17,000 students were collected in 2021. Meanwhile, data collected by Gallup also shows that the share of Americans who identify as homosexual has doubled over the past 10 years. It says that a large portion of so-called Generation Z categorizes themselves as such. The data was compiled after conducting a poll among over 10,000 adults this year. The Holy Father has praised the Billings method of natural family planning as a valuable tool for married couples. Pope Francis says the method developed by John and Evelyn Billings offers a valuable tool for the responsible management of procreative choices. In a message to a conference on the Billings method, the pontiff said it has spurred a serious reflection on the need for education about the value of the human body. The Pope said it calls for an integrated and integral vision of human sexuality the building up of a culture that welcomes life and ways to confront the problem of demographic collapse. The papal message was shared with participants of an international congress titled The Billings Revolution 70 Years Later, From Fertility Knowledge to Personalised Medicine. The Billings Method is a church-approved way of regulated birth, using knowledge about the couple's natural fertile and infertile periods to either help conceive or to postpone conception through periodic abstinence. Republican lawmakers of the US state of Oregon are criticizing a bill that guarantees access to abortion and sex reassignment surgery for minors without parental consent. Private insurers would also be forced to cover such procedures. Despite the attempts of party members to block it, House Bill 2002 cleared the House of Representatives. The legislation expands taxpayer money to fund gender reassignment surgery without parental consent. The proposal also mandates that public universities and community colleges with student health centres provide emergency contraception and medication abortion. Many Republicans and various pro-life advocates decried the same, stating it is a loss for children and patents in the state. Iraqi authorities are getting up to create a digital database of all Christian communities in the country. The database will chronicle the spread of Christians in the Middle Eastern nation, their levels of education, professional skills, marital status and occupation. It is being prepared by the Department of Christian Affairs at the Endowment Office of Minority Faith Communities. In this regard, an electronic form to collect statistical data has been sent out. The initiative has been carried out with the cooperation of the Information Technology Department of the Endowment Office. The database is expected to be a good way to analyse the feasibility study of investment and service projects for the betterment of Christian communities. To ensure its success, the Department of Christian Affairs has appealed to all heads of churches to encourage believers to fill in the electronic forms. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.